Hey there, fellow edibles enthusiasts. Before we get started with today's show, I just wanted to take a quick minute to talk about something that has completely transformed the way I make my edibles, the T-Check 3 Potency Tester. If you've ever made your own edibles, you know the importance of getting the dosages just right. Too strong and you're down for the count. Too weak and well, it's not exactly what you hope for. That's where the T-Check 3 comes in. I've been using this little gadget for years, even before I started the show, and they've just come out with an updated model, the T-Check 3. And it takes all the guesswork out of infusing your oils, butters, and even your tinctures. With the T-Check 3, you can test your infusions in just minutes right from your kitchen. No more wondering if your batch is potent enough or stressing over inconsistent doses. It's fast, easy, and gives you the peace of mind that your edibles will come out just the way you want them every time. If you're serious about making edibles like I am, then this is a must-have tool. Plus, as a Bite Me listener, you can get an exclusive discount. Head over to tcheck.me and use the code BITEME at checkout for a sweet deal on your very own T-Check 3. Trust me, once you have it, you won't want to make edibles without it. Hello friends, welcome to episode 273. Today we are doing Scotcheroos. Welcome to Bite Me, the show about edibles, where I help you take control of your high life. I'm your host and certified gange, Margaret, and I love helping cooks make safe and effective edibles at home. I'm so glad you're here. Greetings friends, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Bite Me. And if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad you found this little corner of the internet where you can gleefully listen about cannabis content and making your own edibles at home, a little radical self-reliance for us all, because God knows, sometimes you just got to take care of things yourself. Am I right? And if you've been around for a while, my heartfelt appreciation goes out to you because it is not easy creating a show, especially in this little niche that I'm in. And it's folks like you that share it with friends and family that make this show discoverable. And I'm on a mission to empower people to create their own edibles at home and to build community around them. Because is there anything more lovely than receiving a beautiful gift of something infused from someone that you care about? Now, today we are talking about Scotch Ruse. And before I get into today's episode, I wasn't actually planning on doing this, but let's try it out. The Stoner Trivia. I haven't done that in a while. Just for fun, let's do a question out of the deck. The Stoner Trivia Race to 420 deck that I received from Wayne a little while ago. Thank you, Wayne. He is a regular listener of the show. And this question is in the category Unjust Bust. Which member of the Beatles was arrested in London after police found 120 joints in his home in 1969? Was it George Harrison, John Lennon, or Ringo? 120 joints. Is that because back in 1969, the joints, the weed was not as strong and therefore you needed that many in order to get the effects that you were looking for? Or... This person just wanted to be well-prepared. We may never know. Again, that question is, which member of the Beatles was arrested in London after police found 120 joints in his home in 1969? If you guessed George Harrison, you would be correct. And that's just a little cannabis trivia. So the next time you're going to a trivia night, you are prepared for whatever questions they throw at you. I do happen to go to a trivia night in my local town, not every week, but I am part of a little group of ladies that like to go to this trivia night at a local pub. And let me just say some nights are better than others as far as the score that we get on our our trivia questions. Sometimes we do great and other times not so well. And having questions like these in your back pocket can be remarkably handy when you're doing something like a trivia night. And if you haven't been out to a trivia night at a local establishment near you recently, I'd say it's a fun way to exercise some brain power while meeting new friends. And if you can sneak in a cannabis drink, then more power to you. I haven't tried that yet, but maybe I will. So let's get into today's episode. 
I had kind of first started this, I had looked for this particular recipe, not this specific one, but I was looking for no bake recipes because over in the cannabis club that I am building, I created a challenge for a no bake November because November is a busy month. I know for you folks in the U.S., Thanksgiving is coming up, which means that's like the real start to the holidays, the holiday season. And it's just, things seem to be getting busier towards the end of the year. So why not find recipes where you don't have to slave over a hot oven? Now this one did require some melting of things, but it was so easy to put together that, that I don't know if that really qualifies. So this was just an easy recipe that you can make, you can freeze And I thought I would share it here because I'm trying to make life easier for you all. Now, these scotcheroos, you may be wondering, what is a scotcheroo? And I'm glad you're asking because I'm going to tell you, essentially, they are a Rice Krispie treat, but without marshmallows and instead peanut butter. Did you say peanut butter? Yes, I did. And so that makes them actually a really filling treat as well. So if you're going to be just having one because you've infused it, then you're going to, I find them very satisfying. Now, I actually infused mine with, instead of THC, CBD, because it's really difficult to make a whole tray of something delicious like these scotcheroos and then not be able to share them with my father, who I am living with currently. And while he has become far more tolerant and open to the idea of cannabis, he is still not a convert for himself, using edibles in the more traditional way where you eat one and you get really high, and then it might also, you know, help you with some of the ailments. Myself, you know, that lower back pain is definitely alleviated when I consume edibles, but I can't expect him at the age of 93 to suddenly change his mind to decide he wants to get lit, but he is open to CBD. So I did infuse him with CBD, which also means I've eaten a good number of these scotch roos already, and they are delicious. I think I'm going to have to freeze some because otherwise I'm going to eat an ungodly number. And don't think that I'm not sharing. Uh, What I like to do sometimes is leave a couple out on a little dish or a plate in the kitchen. And he will ask, oh, are these for anybody? And I will, of course, say, absolutely, please eat some because I've probably also already eaten several myself before putting them out on the plate. And I'll go into the kitchen and see that he's cut off a half. And then he'll cut off, have another little piece later. And it's just kind of heartwarming to see that he's enjoying these as much as I am. So I'm not just doing it all for myself, but that also means sometimes I have to use things like CBD as the main cannabinoid in this particular creation than I might otherwise, but that's okay. I have plenty of other THC uh, infused edibles that I can make use of as well. This is just the way I'm living right now. So, you know, these are the things I have to deal with. And I'm sure all of you have your own little living situation. I shouldn't say little living situations, living situations out there where you have to think about the people that you live with. And maybe sometimes that means you got to move towards CBD versus THC. I'll be doing both. I'm going to be doing probably more baking and creating as we get closer to the holidays, because I do like to gift these types of things to people that I care about. So obviously I'm going to have more, uh, THC and CBD infused treats around the house. And I'll probably freeze quite a few as well, because there is nothing like doing all the work up front and then being able to store it and then coming back to it after you're pooped and it's been busy and you're tired and thinking, I have some options that I made a little while ago that I can tap into now. So all these things. Now it says that these scotcheroos, I found this uh, recipe on a website called The Pioneer Woman. I am not a pioneer woman, but the recipe looked tasty. And it said that they were created by the Kellogg Company in 1965. And Kellogg's got a pretty interesting history or philosophy, but I didn't actually use Rice Krispie Treats myself. I use a different brand. I found something else in a store that I like to go to, but of course, whatever works for you. And they're pretty easy to make. 
I used infused honey for this. So I made some infused honey for this particular recipe, but I made enough so that I had it for other things. I've already used it for something else. I can't even remember what it is at the moment, but I have used it in also as a sweetener for teas. It's, it's mostly tea. I don't really put honey in my coffee, but you can. And I think that's probably the easiest way to infuse this. Actually, I think it's pretty much the only way to infuse it unless you used infused chocolate to do the topping. So basically, if you're trying to imagine what a Scotch Roux is, it's a Rice Krispie t- treat where the instead of marshmallows that you're mixing in with the Rice Krispies or the Rice Puffs or whatever you want to call them, you're using a mix, a, a peanut butter honey sugar mixture. And then you top it with melted chocolate and that gives the top coating, which you just then put it in the fridge to set and then you can cut it up into pieces. So it's really easy to make, but think Rice Krispies, but on steroids because they are sweet and delicious. But again, with the peanut butter, it makes them more filling as far as a treat goes, as I already mentioned. So what you need for the, the peanut butter mix is basically your infused honey some brown sugar in your creamy peanut butter, and a little bit of vanilla. You melt all that stuff on the stove, you pour it over top of your, or the Rice Krispies that are in a bowl, and then you press that into the bottom of of your uh, coated uh, baking tray. And then while that's happening, you are going to take some of your semi-sweet chocolate chips, butterscotch chips. I think this is what really got me because as a caramel lover, I love caramel, and butterscotch I mean, I had me a butterscotch. So you melt the chocolate and the butterscotch and a little bit of coconut oil together. You just do that in the microwave, which was pretty easy to do. You do it in little batches so that you're not going to like overdo it. And then you pour that over top of your your Rice Krispie mixture. Like I said, you take a nice uh, like butter knife or something and spread it out so it's relatively even. And then you put it in the refrigerator and you let it set for at least 30 minutes, cut it into squares and enjoy. They're delicious. I'm, I can't say. And if you're trying to make something for the holidays or coming up, these are easy and delicious and a crowd pleaser because who doesn't love the combination of peanut butter, chocolate, and butterscotch? I mean, this is wonderful. Now the website itself, uh, there was a couple of comments and the only one that I see here was I loved making it for the kids. Just remember if you're making this infused with anything like CBD or THC, you need to label it and let the folks know that they are consuming some cannabis as I have done. Uh, you know, my dad is enjoying these knowing that there's some CBD in them. So that doesn't seem to stop him at all, but of course it's, he's not going to become intoxicated by consuming these. So just be sure that you are going to properly label these and calculate how strong they are if you're gifting them to anybody, because these are just the bare minimum things we need to do to make sure that people enjoy the edibles that you're gifting them. Have you ever received an edible where you're not sure the person who gifted them to you has no idea how strong they are? what feeling does that evoke in you? Because for me, now that I've been doing this for a while, and it's been a while since I've been gifted an edible, but I was a while ago. I can't remember who gifted it to me now. It wasn't really somebody that I knew directly, but I received this edible in a little foil, tin foil. It was like a brownie or something, but no idea how strong they were. And I think I never ended up consuming them because... I mean, we've all talked to people who are like, I have a tolerance. Uh, I was talking to somebody just the other day and they're like, I can tolerate 1200 milligrams of THC without much issue. And for most people, 1200 milligrams of THC would make them extremely ill. I've talked to other people who find five milligrams is their peak dose, their max dose, because that's what allows them to feel good in their body while they're, you know, high. And I've seen everything in between. I'm a third, a 25 milligram kind of gal myself. Some people I tell that to, and they're like, holy shit, that's crazy. And other people are like, yeah, I could do 50, hundred milligrams. So we are all individually unique. We all have our own biology. So just remember that when you gift something to somebody and you're like, yeah, it's, I don't know, I eat it and it seems fine. That doesn't mean anything. So please do the calculations. And remember, I do have a 
calculator over on bitemepodcast.com. It's free to use. You can just go on there, input the info and figure out how much your approximate value of the edibles are that you're making. Because I do realize those calculators are not perfect by any means, but at least giving someone some context is is big. Because if you can give somebody to someone, you're like, yeah, I think it's about 25 milligrams per piece, then they can, if they have no frame of reference, then you can suggest maybe they start with a little small piece. I would often gift people edibles that, you know, if they're like, oh, I just want a couple of cookies, I would always usually gift them an extra one. So that, that would be the experimental cookies. Just like start I, you know, I would tell them how much it was approximately dosage wise. And if they were uncertain of their own tolerance, be like, you know what, you can cut this cookie into like four or maybe eight pieces. It's not as exciting, I realize, but once you have done the work to figure out where your tolerance lies, it really opens up the doors to a whole lot more possibilities. So I'm sure I've ranted about this. Actually, I don't know if rant is the right word because this is a this is important, people. Like radical self-reliance. Yes, it's great to make your own edibles at home, but as soon as you start gifting them to other people, it you are in a sense a representative of the cannabis community because we certainly don't want to feel responsible for someone having a shitty time and possibly never consuming cannabis ever again. Because we're all here listening because we have found some benefit in using cannabis in our lives, no matter what that benefit is. And some people may find that just topicals are where they can tolerate their cannabis use in their life. But how many people have topicals helped or edibles or smoking or whatever it does? And if they have a bad time with that first experience, they may never come back to it again and be forever lost in the world of pharmaceuticals or or just dealing with the pain or the sleeplessness or the anxiety or whatever. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm going on a bit too long about this, but use the calculator over on bitemepodcast.com. It's really easy to use and do try these scotcheroos. I think you'll really enjoy them. They are delicious. They're easy to make and they don't require you turning on your oven. So if you're busy baking up other things this time of year, your oven will be free, free to, I don't know. I've been baking bread again, so maybe baking bread. (laughs) I don't know if there's too much more to say about this, to be honest. So perhaps we'll end it in a couple, in a minute here. But one thing I do want to say, if you haven't yet listened to the episode with Amanda, she's the queen of cannabis, honestly. I love Amanda and she, we did an episode where she, we talked about her aroma wheel, her new cookbook. I guess it is a cookbook. It's mostly focused on making topicals, which is really timely for this time of year. I have already made the lotion bars and they're really easy to make. So a great book if you're interested in making topicals and they do make a lovely gift, especially if you have people in your life that are curious about cannabis, but don't necessarily want to consume it. Topicals are such a beautiful way to introduce people to to cannabis because they can be so effective for so many different folks, for so many different physical pain points that it's a a lovely way to introduce people to cannabis because they don't get high from it. And so it feels a little less scary. But if you haven't listened to that episode yet, Amanda's amazing. And I'm really uh, glad that she's doing the work that she's doing in the world. So that was the most recent episode. And of course, I have lots of fun episodes coming up between now and the end of the year. I can't believe we're getting to this point in the calendar. If you're listening to this in real time, this is being recorded in November of 2024. And God, where does the time go? But I digress. My only uh, request for you right now is if you enjoyed this episode, share it with somebody that you care about. Get out your phone right now and text it to them. And perhaps give them some inspiration for something they can create in their kitchen, infused or otherwise, CBD, THC, whatever cannabinoids you have on hand, whatever cannabis you're using. I think I used actually a combination. Actually, no, I didn't for this one. Never mind. I'll have to probably cut that. But text them right now. And if you make this up, if you make this particular recipe, I would love to hear how you did it. Because like I said, there's more than one way to infuse it. Although the easiest way is to infuse it with honey. I love infused honey. It is such a versatile infusion to have in your pantry because it can be used for so many things. You want to sweeten something up. It's great in beverages, hot, cold, uh, 
It's great in a lot of sweets and desserts where you want to sweeten something, but it's not necessarily calling for a fat like you would in traditional edibles. So it's a really handy infusion to have on hand. But of course, you could use infused chocolate as well, but that might require a little extra planning if you're going to infuse the chocolate yourself or go and make it. But anyway, that's it for this week, my friends. I could probably keep talking because I just had a second cup of coffee and I'm feeling a little jazzed up. But please let me know if you try making this. Send me your questions, comments, pictures, anything. I love to see it all. And... Until next week, my friends, I'm your host, Margaret. Stay high. Wait, wait, wait. One more thing before you go. I wanted to share a game changer in my kitchen, the Levo 2 infusion device. If you're serious about making your own edibles, you're going to want to hear this. I've been using the Levo 2 for my infusions, and it makes the process so easy and mess-free. Whether you're infusing oils, butters, honey, even milk, the Levo 2 handles it all. Plus, it takes care of decarbing your cannabis right in the machine. No need for extra steps or guesswork, just perfect infusions every time. One of my favorite things is completely customizable. You can set your own time and temperature, which means you get the exact potency you want without any hassle. And the best part, cleanup is a breeze. Just pop the parts in the dishwasher when you're done. No mess, no stress. So if you're looking to level up your edible making game, the Levo 2 is the way to go. And because you're a Bite Me listener, I've got a little something for you today. Head over to levooil.com and use the code BITEME at checkout to get a special discount on your Levo 2 today. You'll wonder how you ever made edibles without it.